Hello truth seekers and welcome back to our channel, where we unveil the shocking truth behind the glamorous world of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our channel. Buckle up folks because your favorite neighborhood critic is back with some scalding hot royal tea that's about to make your head spin faster than a corgi chasing its tail at Buckingham Palace. Today, we're diving deep into the latest chapter of the never-ending saga that is the British royal family versus the California castaways, aka Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. But before we delve into further discussion, if you haven't subscribed, I mean, come on guys, what are you waiting for? Hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell ASAP. So now, I know what you're thinking, ugh, not another Harry and Meghan story, but trust me, this isn't just another rehash of their latest Instagram post or charity event. No, no, no. This is about King Charles dropping the mic so hard it's probably left a dent on the throne room floor. We're talking about the ultimate power move that might just send Harry and Meghan packing their designer bags right back to the land of fish and chips. So grab your tea, or popcorn, or heck, both, I won't judge, and let's dive into this royal rumble that's shaking the very foundations of the monarchy. First things first, let's set the scene. Our dynamic duo Harry and Meghan have been living it up in sunny California for a few years now. They've been busy busy busy, writing books, making Netflix deals, giving interviews, launching foundations, and generally trying to convince the world that they're the most important thing since sliced bread, or should I say since Diana's iconic revenge dress. But here's the kicker. They've been doing all this while still clinging to their royal titles like a lifeline. It's like they're trying to have their cake and eat it too, only, in this case, the cake is a multi-million dollar empire built on, well, complaining about the very institution that gave them those titles in the first place. Talk about biting the hand that feeds you. Now let's talk about their biggest problem as revealed by a palace insider. Apparently our dynamic duo was just bursting with ideas, always hatching new plans over dinner, wanting everything done yesterday. Sounds great, right? Wrong. It was all scattergun, as the Brits would say. In other words, they were all over the place, like a drunk uncle at a wedding trying to do the Macarena. This insider spilled the tea, saying, It's very hard to sort of pin down and say who are they, what are they, what exactly they do. And ain't that the truth? Are they royals, celebrities, influencers, philanthropists? The answer is, drum roll please, all of the above and none of the above. They're like the Schrodinger's cat of the celebrity world, simultaneously everything and nothing. But here's where it gets really juicy. King Charles, the man who's been silently watching this circus from across the pond, has finally had enough. He's pulling out the big guns and let me tell you, it's a move so savage it would make even the most seasoned Real Housewives star gasp in awe. What's the move you ask? Well it's simple yet devastating. He's cutting them off, not financially. Been there, done that, but from the one thing they crave more than anything else, the spotlight. That's right folks, King Charles is playing the long game, and it's a masterclass on how to deal with attention seeking family members. He's not engaging in a public spat, he's not giving interviews or writing tell all books, no, he's doing something far more powerful, he's ignoring them. Think about it, what's the one thing that Harry and Meghan have built their post royal brand on? being victims of the royal machine. They've painted themselves as the underdogs, the rebels fighting against a cruel and outdated institution. But how can you play the victim when the supposed villain isn't even acknowledging your existence? It's like trying to have a boxing match with an opponent who refuses to step into the ring. You can swing all you want, but you're just going to end up looking silly and punching the air. And let's be real, this move is absolutely brilliant, because here's the thing about the entertainment industry which, let's face it, is what Harry and Meghan are really into now. It's all about relevance, and nothing kills relevance faster than being ignored. Just look at what happened in the past few months. Harry wasn't invited to the Trooping the Color. Charles couldn't fit him into his schedule. He was uninvited from the wedding of the year. It's like the royal version of leaving someone on red. But it's not just about snubbing them at events. It's a complete change in how the royal family is dealing with the constant barrage of accusations and revelations. Remember the good old days when every time Harry and Meghan did something, the palace would issue a statement? Those days are gone, baby. Now it's all about the dignified silence. And let me tell you, that silence is deafening. 
It's like shouting into a void. Harry and Meghan can release all the tell-all books and Netflix documentaries they want, but if the royal family isn't fighting, it's just sad. It's like watching someone trying to start a fight at a party, but everyone else is just sipping their drinks and pretending not to notice. Now, I can already hear some of you Harry and Meghan stands out there getting your knickers in a twist, but they're doing important work. They're advocates, they're philanthropists, and to that I say, are they though? Let's break it down. Since leaving the royal family, what have they actually accomplished? They've launched a foundation, sure, they've given speeches, they've advocated for various causes, but when you really look at it, what tangible impact have they had? Compare that to the work the royal family does day in and day out. The countless charities they support, the diplomatic roles they play, the traditions they uphold. Love them or hate them, you can't deny that the royals have a clear purpose and role. But Harry and Meghan? They're like that friend who's always talking about the amazing business they're going to start. Someday. They're all talk and no action. They're the human embodiment of that sure Jan meme. And here's the kicker. By trying to be everything, they've ended up being nothing. They're not royals anymore, but they cling to their titles. They're not celebrities in the traditional sense, but they're trying to play in that sandbox. They claim to want privacy, but they're constantly in the public eye. It's like they're stuck in some weird limbo. Not quite royal, not quite celebrity, not quite advocates. They're the square peg trying to fit into every round hole they can find. And that, my friends, is exactly why King Charles' move is so devastating. Because in the world of celebrity and influence, if you're not clearly defined, you're nothing. And right now, Harry and Meghan are about as clearly defined as a fog on a London morning. But wait, there's more. Let's talk about the absolute irony of their situation. They left the royal family because they wanted freedom, right? They wanted to escape the constraints of royal life, to be able to speak their truth, to live life on their own terms. Well, congrats, guys. You got exactly what you wanted. You're free. Free to do whatever you want, say whatever you want, be whoever you want to be. There's just one tiny problem. Turns out, freedom doesn't pay the bills. Freedom doesn't keep you relevant. Freedom doesn't automatically make you interesting. In fact, I'd argue that they were far more interesting and influential when they were working royals. They had a platform, a purpose, a clear role. Now they're just another couple of celebs in a sea of celebs, all clamoring for attention. And let's not forget about the absolute PR nightmare they've created for themselves. They've burned so many bridges they could probably qualify for a job with the fire department. They've alienated the royal family, a good chunk of the British public and even some of their initial supporters in the States. Remember when they first moved to America? Everyone was falling over themselves to welcome them, to hear their story, to support their cause. Fast forward a few years and the shine has definitely worn off. Turns out, people get tired of hearing the same complaints over and over again. Who knew? But here's the real kicker. They've painted themselves into a corner. They've built their entire post-royal brand on being victims, on fighting against the institution. But what happens when the institution stops fighting back? What happens when the villain in your story refuses to play the role? That's the genius of King Charles' move. He's not just ignoring them, he's rendering their entire narrative obsolete. He's changing the game while they're still trying to play by the old rules. And let's be real, it's not like Harry and Meghan can suddenly pivot to being pro-monarchy. Can you imagine? Just kidding, guys. The royal family is great. We love traditions and protocol. Yeah, not gonna happen. So where does that leave them? Stuck in a narrative of their own making with no clear path forward. They're like that person at a party who's still talking about their high school glory days while everyone else has moved on. Now I'm not saying Harry and Meghan are done for. They've still got name recognition, they've still got supporters, and let's face it, they're both pretty good looking. Hey, I might be critical, but I'm not blind. But if they want to stay relevant, if they want to actually make a difference, they're going to need to seriously rethink their strategy. Because right now, they're playing checkers while King Charles is playing 4D chess. And let me tell you, in the Game of Thrones, you either win or you become irrelevant. There is no in-between. So what's next for our California Royals? Well, if I were a betting person, which let's face it, I am, I'd say we're in for some major rebranding. They'll need to find a new narrative, a new purpose, something that doesn't rely on constantly rehashing their royal grievances. 
Maybe they'll finally launch that lifestyle brand everyone's been speculating about. Maybe they'll dive headfirst into Hollywood and start producing feel-good movies. Or maybe, just maybe, they'll realize that the best revenge is living well, and they'll actually start focusing on their charity work instead of just talking about it. Whatever they do, one thing's for sure, it's going to be entertaining as hell to watch. Because let's face it folks, the Harry and Meghan show might be losing steam, but it's still the best reality TV out there. So there you have it, YouTube fam, King Charles' ultimate power move, the slow and steady destruction of Harry and Meghan's victim narrative. It's not flashy, it's not dramatic, but boy oh boy is it effective. So what do you think? Is Charles playing it smart? Or should he engage more directly? Are Harry and Meghan on their way out, or do they still have some tricks up their designer sleeves? Drop your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more piping hot royalty. Until then, stay tuned for more shocking stories and scandalous exposés on our YouTube channel. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on the latest from the world of the royal family. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again with some more fascinating news about the royal family. Bye for now.